Your Imperial Majesty, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Yamini Krishnamurti and her troop, I would like to express our sense of happiness, indeed our sense of spiritual fulfillment in being present here on this occasion. But that is a feeling which is more than words can convey. It is in Shiraz that we happen to be present, and again we are in the immediacy of the gracious presence tonight. As regards Hafiz, against whose revered tomb we have the privilege of presenting this recital. It has been said, I think the poet himself said it, that he found every other city than Shiraz a prison house. It is not given to a mere mortal to outsay this heaven-born poet, but sometimes it happens that one can say something. And we who have been present in Shiraz for some days and have to leave soon have developed such an attachment to this lovely city of roses that it has become a prison house. We shall find it very difficult indeed to get away. Yamini will be presenting to you today a dance which has been nurtured in the temples. And as this festival is devoted to the ritual theater, we do not apologize for our presence here, though art does teach one humility. Ritual, when it is authentic, breeds rapture, not boredom, for the temples bred this dance. It is only when ritual is false when what is given one in the name of bread is as hard as stone, that it breeds something that is dismal and disgusting. But here we have something that has been nurtured in the temples, and I, who just saw the great palace, or the ruins of the palace of Persepolis, know the kinship that exists between India and Iran. Even the word apadana means the offering of tributes in Sanskrit. And that's the palace where the tributes were brought from 28 nations to the great king. Because the Shankara says, apadanam pasupate. Apadana is giving the tributes to a king. That is the close link that binds these two peoples. And as regards women's liberation, which is a new thing in the new world, it's a very old thing with us. It is actually woman who liberated man, even as the Bible can endorse it. And in our religion and philosophy, woman is the power, shakti. And it is said that the deity cannot move even a step without the shaktis and the Shakti energizes him. So the principle of Shakti, the feminine principle, is the principle of power, of liberation. And that is what Yamini will present to you.
باعث نهایت خوشبختی منه که مختصری بعد از برنامه امشب با آقای پروفسور کریشنا مورتی صحبت بکنم دو برنامه فوق العاده جالب از رقص بهارات ناتیام توسط ایشان و دو دخترشان به همراهی یک گروه نوازندگان هند جنوبی اجرا شده است که از جمله بهترین برنامه های فستیوال شیراز امسال بوده Um, this is my great pleasure indeed to be talking to uh, Professor Krishnamurti uh, who has, uh, with the aid of uh, his two very gifted daughters and an ensemble of musicians, presented two outstanding programs at this year's festival in Shiraz. So uh, may I, to begin with, thank you on my own behalf and on the behalf of uh, the festival for your participation in uh, this festival and may I say that uh, your uh, presentations have indeed been among the highlights of uh, our festival. Thank you. Um, may I uh, ask uh, f a few questions that come to my mind concerning this splendid art of uh, Bharat Natyam uh, one thing that particularly interests me very much uh, is the origins and to what extent are they involved with uh, religion or ritual? Uh, may I translate this uh, mm -hmm. question first? Soal mikonam as a professor Krishnamurti, Tabore Rishahoye Rasabarat Natyam. که تا چه اندازه این ریشه ها مربوط به سنن آینی یا مذهبی هستند؟ Well, the dance began in India as anywhere else as a sort of self-expression, an expression of joy, an aesthetic expression. And since India is a religious country, it was impressed into the service of religion as part of the divine service in the temples. But basically, I think, it is an aesthetic form rather than religious. The answer is that in Hind, like every other country, they believe that the religion is a form of the religion. بر بیان زیبایی و چون هند یک کشور خیلی مذهبی است بدون شک یک آلودگی عمیقی با رسوم مذهبی اینجا هست ولی در اساس میگن که تصور من, من بر این است که بیشتر موضوع بیان زیبایی استتیک مطرح هست تا مذهب you have uh, demonstrated uh, the technique of this dance which uh, I and I know other uh, viewers have marveled at the extent of the systematic procedure that is involved. Is really everything so thoroughly synchronized in terms of the movements as they correspond to the rhythm? as to the, as to, uh, the uh, uh, performance of the words as they are uttered by the speaker, that uh, the young lady who says uh, the vocalese. Is everything about this so thoroughly systematic and synchronized? I ask you a question that I am a member of the community and I think many of the people are از اینکه چقدر این رقص روی اصول و تکنیک دقیق اجرا میشه و سوال میکنم که آیا واقعا این اندازه ارتباط حساب شده بین رفتار و حرکات رقاص با سازهایی که اجرا میکنند و با بیانی که گوینده اون خانمی که وکالیز یعنی یک جملات یک سیلابل های را ادا میکنه آیا اینقدر ارتباط حساب شده بین اینها هست 
Well, uh, the audience here has been witnessing a classical dance by one of the foremost exponents of that art, Yamini Krishnamurti. Uh, the very essence of classicism is precision. It's perfect synchronization with the music that sustains it. And in this case, since the singer happens to be her sister and has been singing with her for some time, for a number of years, there's a perfect rapport between the two, which gives that extra power of communication. It becomes one integrated art. Actually, Yamini is visualizing the music. توضیح میدن که یامینی کرشنا مورتی دخترشون که شهرت جهانی در اجرای رقص دارن و این رقص اجرا کردن سبک کاملا کلاسیک بارات ناتیام رو ادا میکنن و در این سبک حرکات خیلی خیلی حساب شده و دقیق هستن و ارتباط با نوازندگان سازها خیلی زیاد به علاوه کسی که وکالیز یا جملات رو ادا میکنه خواهر اوست که طبعا ایجاد یک ارتباط خیلی دقیق تر و نزدیک تری بین گوینده و رقاص ایجاد میکنه uh, One other uh, question that comes to my mind is that these gestures these symbolic movements whether in uh, the movements of the arms or, or the hands or the feet, uh, or body and face and all that and eyes and all that, uh, they all signify things which you very briefly, naturally, uh, since there hasn't been enough time, explain some of them, I'm sure, to us. Do the people, do the public in India know these things? Uh, you surely don't uh, need to explain them to your public in India, as you have done to us. So I'll ask you, Mr. Kanam, that in the movements that all of them are aware of, this kind of detail, aware of things, feelings, all the kind of stories, all the kind of things that they can explain to us, from the movements of the arms, the hands, the face, the face, the face, all of them. که ایشون خودشون مختصرا مقدارش رو برای ما توضیح دادن آیا در هندوستان تماشاگر اونجا احتیاج به این یه همچین توضیح داره یا اونها تمام این حرکات رو میدونن و میدونن اینها معرف چی هستن Well actually even the audiences in India do not understand these mudras they are called mudras meaning seals and they are indeed seals unless they are deciphered. <laughs> a mudra means a seal. Well, the apparent beauty of it, of the mudra, is enough for the audience. Because these mudras, apart from being significant, are also beautiful. And that sustains the interest of the audience. But a few cognoscente, those who are conver conversant with the dance form, understand the mudras. But I sometimes find it necessary to explain the basic gestures, even in India. I see. Tozi, Aye, Professor Krishna Murti, in as ke dar hin ham in harikati ke ham maarif matalibi hastan, va khili teedad shun vasiye daaniste nistan, shenakhte nistan tarasut mardom adi. و اونجا هم گاهی احتیاج به این هست که توضیحات داده بشه ولی چون در خود این حرکات حتی بدون دانستن معانی یک زیبایی هست این قطعا بیننده هندی رو خیلی راضی نگه می داره گوی که ممکنه ندونه تمام جزیات مفهوم این حرکات رو There's also just one other thing which I forgot to say that in an Indian context the audience understands the language and they know the stories yes. so that they understand these gestures easily. Yes, of course. توضیح اضافه این است که چون کلامی که ادا میشه رو البته مردم اونجا میفهمن این کمک میکنه به این که داستان رو پیروی بکنن دنبال بکنن 
و طبعا مفهوم بیشتری براشون خواهد داشت اگر هم که معنو... معنی این حرکات خوب ندونن پروفسور کریشنا مورتی This has been your first visit to Persia has it not? It has been, yes uh, I hope that uh, be, this will not be the last and I certainly I hope, do not hope, hope it to be the last uh, uh, We will have occasion and the opportunity to have you and uh, your uh, splendid company come here again for uh, uh, numerous visits. So I thank you very much, uh, and I shan't keep you. I know you're very tired. Be ishun baz tashakur khosh vakti khodamu arz kardam az in ke amadan be Iran va chun goftan ke avalin mulaqat shun be Iran bude ishar امید کردم که این ملاقات آخر نخواهد بود و باز هم مکرر با گروهشون به ایران تشریف خواهند بود. I would like to say just one thing that when their imperial majesties the Shah and Shah came to India yes. when we had a great Muslim as our president Dr. Zakir Hussain Yamini had the great uh, privilege of presenting her dance in their immediate presence in the Rashtrapati Bhavan. Yes. And the desire to visit this beautiful country arose there from the graciousness of that contact. And I'm so happy that it has been fulfilled today. Thank you. I was told that the time that Allah Hazrat Shah and Shah and Shah Banu Iran were presented to the Hindus, موقعیتی پیش آمد که دخترشون این رقص رو در مقابل از علا حضرت این اجرا بکنن و آرزوی آمدن به ایران از همان زمان و از تفقیت و مرحبان ابراز فرمودن این امید از همونجا پیش آمد و نهایت خوشبختی رو ابراز میکنه از اینکه بالاخره توانستن که به این امید واقعیت بدن. I thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night.